Yeah. And who here has done some space project? Good. Good. <laughs> and who here wants to do some space project? Excellent. So uh, for those who have done some space projects, definitely up for exchanging notes. Uh, for those who's put your hands up just now to say you wanted to do some, hopefully this will give you some pointer. And ooh, we've, we can see, I don't know if you can see the space image there. Um, <laughs> excellent. And for those who haven't put uh, your hands up, I'm, I'm imagining that you haven't put your hands up because space is a fuzzy image, as fuzzy as this image uh, that you probably can't even see. Um, and hopefully um, in this talk, I'm going to be able to sort of give you some pointer so it's not so fuzzy. Um, in fact, space was a very fuzzy topic for me as well a year ago. Um, I, but I had enough of uh, not being able to do anything with space. So last year, um, I've decided to start doing something about it. And if I can start doing something about it, so can you. So how do I go to the next slide? Uh, slide deck is not going to the next slide. All right. Page on page on. How about that? Ah, okay. Kind of, kind of roughly there. It's all fine. Uh, no, that's the last slide. <laughs> I'm sorry, you're gonna do it backwards. <laughs> right. That's it. Start again. Um, so here is the next slide, uh, as you can see. It. So the first project I'm going to tell you about is uh, Kicksat Sprites. How many people here have heard of Kicksats? Very good. And CubeSats? Excellent. So I don't even need to explain much about this, but I will, I will kind of talk through that uh, slightly for those who, haven't, uh, know, who don't know what it is yet. So Kicksat is a project started by Zach Manchester from Cornell University. Um, his idea basically is to send, uh, is to crowdfund uh, the space projects, but also actually to give people who back the project a chance to actually do some programming and actually have their own sprites, which is a satellite. So the thing he's holding there, I'm glad you can see the screen now, is a satellite. So that little PCB board with a, a, a microcontroller, which is very similar to the Arduino one, and some sensors on it. It also has some radio, um, uh, radio chip on it. And uh, well, that particular chip don't have solar uh, panels, but the real thing does. So his idea basically is to send 200 of these um, sprites, which is a PCB, but basically a satellite, um, up into space uh, you, uh, carried by the Kicksat mothership. Uh, so the bigger, um, satellite there is called Kicksat. As you can imagine, the chipset is so small, the sprite is so small, it, that's not actually a model, that's actually the, the prototype. Um, as the Kicksat, as the sprite is so small, the Kicksat itself doesn't need to be very big, the mothership itself. Um, so the reason why I was asking if people have heard of CubeSats before is because that mothership is basically a CubeSat. A CubeSat is a satellite that has a fixed dimension. One U would be 10 by 10 by 10 centimeters. And the Kicksat in particular is a three U, so it's 30 by 10 by 10 by 10. Um, it's nothing like our sort of traditional satellites, so nothing like the double-decker size uh, NVSAT or the football pitch size uh, International Space Station. So it becomes something that is a lot more tangible for uh, us um, but um, the most important thing here is that sprites that Zach has uh, produced, 200 of, he had made it available for backers to program. Um, and basically the programming environment is not dissimilar to your average Arduino. Who here has done some Arduino programming? There you are, you can all make some satellites. <laughs> so, um, basically, the ID is called Energia, and it's very similar to, um, 
to Arduino IDE. Now, this project actually was backed uh, back, it was kind of like completed or funded back in 2011. Um, so rewind a bit, I was kind of thinking that I only got to clarify my thoughts about space last year and uh, I missed the chance of getting my own satellite, but I was lucky enough uh, to find friendly people like these ones uh, who would actually you know, welcome me in and let me play with the Kicksat that they've backed. So they paid for it, I get to, pay, I get to play with it. Um, so I was really, really lucky with that. And these guys from British Interplanetary Society was running a project on Kicksat, so they bought uh, one themselves and they made it available for people to play with. I, I managed to join the project kind of very much towards the end. So here is a photo of us sort of listening to, learning to listen to satellites, so pointing antennas and looking at like a new radio on laptops and stuff. Um, I just wanted to show this so that it, you know, it's kind of a very um, achievable thing. It's a very tangible thing. Even, even though if you might not have got in the right time, if you found people who, who have been doing it, um, they will probably in, be quite welcoming and welcome you to join them. Um, here is an image of uh, actually listening to our very own Kicksat sprites. I don't think you can see much on that photo, but the idea is I, you know, I joined the project at the end, but I was still involved in a lot of things and people were really welcome about, welcoming about it. Um, and I helped these guys to upload their code into GitHub. I looked over their shoulder for the coding bit, uh, mostly. Um, so but I still help them with uh, uploading the code to GitHub. And if you, wanted any, if you wanted to have a look at what space code looks like, um, you can have a look at there. So now that I've sort of briefly talked about Kicksats, um, I kind of wanted to say that for those who feel gutted as I do for missing out on uh, programming as sprites or you know, not owning a satellite of your own, um, the next one coming up is Pocket Spacecrafts. So Pocket Spacecrafts is another sort of um, personal spacecraft um, that is of the size of a CD and is a thin film um, satellite. So on, on there, it would have printed electronics and printed solar panels. So these things are still available for backing, uh, although kind of not on the Kicksat site, but on their own site, you'd be able to find information about it. And again, because the guy, Michael Johnson, who is involved in Pocket Spacecraft is also involved in Kicksat, I imagine the programming wouldn't be very different or very far from Arduinos. So there's your second chance to uh, get a satellite of your own. So that's just to give you the scale of the um, dimension we're talking about. On the right is the Kicksat. On the left is the pocket spacecraft. So um, those are the sort of satellite type work if you want to do space project, but there are more than just satellite in the space, of course. And uh, one of it is uh, Exoskin is a project that I've started um, in April about open source spacesuit. So um, I kind of just wanted to, because those are kind of um, it's actually really interesting to be able to start an open, sa open source spacesuit project. The idea basically is, I don't know if you've seen um, uh, astronauts' images before where they walk in this huge uh, pressurized balloon and they can't really move very much, very easily. It's not very comfortable. And thinking about it, if we really are going to travel in space, I don't know if I want to wear those um, spacesuits. Um, so I had the idea of sort of redesigning it. Um, and the idea is basically this, they call it the EVA, which is the extra uh, vehicular activity spacesuit. So basically a spacesuit that you'd wear if you go outside and do stuff. Um, I wanted to make this a spacesuit that is more natural. Um, in a way, a, a natural by natural, I mean, you know, you wear your clothing, it doesn't get in your way, it doesn't, you know, stop you from doing things. Um, and I wanted that kind of spacesuit. And because I, I have a software engineering background, I wanted to have uh, multiple layers. I wanted to have a modularized, componentized <laughs> spacesuit. So I wanted to build many different layers with each layer. 
um, being uh, separate uh, to the previous layer, a bit of a decorator going on if, in terms of software patterns. Um, so the idea basically is a uh, close, uh, close to skin kind of uh, sensor layer, which would take your body uh, physical input and amplify it to your outer garment, whichever it is. So if it's the sort of pressurized one, it might help you to depressurize certain points so you can actually move easily. Um, but uh, it also takes input from the external world and pass it in. So currently you wear this massive balloon and you don't know what's going on outside. It's true that you don't want to feel the extreme temperatures outdoors, um, but you know, sometimes it's useful to have a bit of feedback that doesn't involve you actively reading a screen or looking at some figures. Um, so it all started um, at the NASA Space App Challenge. So if you haven't heard of NASA Space App Challenge, it's an annual event where, uh, where NASA sort of throws out all of their challenges to everyone to participate. You can participate as a virtual participant, so you can actually just sit at your home and do it, or you can go to a local center and do some coding there. You can solo it, you can make a group, you can do anything, it's very open. The only criteria is the code is open, so Exoskin is also open source. Um, and here is what I've done on the sort of first 36 hours on top of all the thinking of the layers and everything else. Um, this doesn't look very wearable, but we'll get to it. Um, so, <laughs> so this is uh, a spaghetti of uh, cables, a spaghetti of cables which basically uh, does very simple things. It's a very dark image here. I'm not sure if you can see it properly. Um, basically, I've taped the, a flex sensor onto the joint of a mannequin and hooked the rest up to the Arduino. And there is a small motor here. And so basically, I was prototyping the idea of taking an input, a join input, and sort of affecting a output correspondingly. So that's what I did in sort of the first 36 hours, uh, including that website. So if you want more information or like um, uh, more information or to find, find out where the code is, the code is at www.exoskin.com. So E-X-O-S-K-N without the I. Um, and so that was back in April then. Um, so now we have moved it on. The team size has doubled, so it was me uh, in April, and now we're two um, <laughs> working on this project um, every Wednesday currently. Um, and so we've, we've been trying to make more wearable stuff, so that's our prototype glove, a finger off. Um, and so we've been playing with conductive uh, elastic band, conductive ink, uh, pressure fabric, and sort of prototyping different bits and seeing how it works. So it's a lot of measuring and sort of trying to figure out what the properties of these things are. Um, we've been finding conductive ink very unpredictable. I mean, if you've worked with it before and you've got some tips for me, please uh, give me some tips because at the moment I'm thinking that stuff, no matter how I try to print it, I try to screen print it, I try to just ink it up, squeeze it out, it just, it just doesn't behave as I expected. So that's that one. Um, and I wanted to, um, so, the, so the idea of the spacesuit project is to turn this kind of spacesuit experience into this kind of spacesuit experience. And to do that, uh, I need a lot of different kinds of people and different skills. I'm checking out loads of uh, sort of name or roles out there. Um, but basically, I think there is so much going on in the space area that if you have, you will have a skill, okay? So bring that skill along and contribute to one of these projects. So for this one in particular, I think it would be really good to have like animators, modelers, or like VR people because the helmet could obviously do with a bit of VR and uh, BCI, so brain computer interface, you know, you might be able to brain control something. But something to think about. And if you have any ideas, I'd, I'd love to hear about it and definitely want you to do bits of it or the whole thing if you want. <laughs> <laughs> Um, I noticed I've skipped the number, so uh, I was on three just now, and this is uh, five. I think the fourth one is um, interplanetary internet. So earlier this, actually at the end of last year, 
Um, we spoke to NASA about interplanetary internet. They're really, really keen to see it being used. So again, if you want to do anything about it, please come and talk to me. And NASA guys are really open. We spoke to them. They gave us our time. We did a Google Hangout, totally overtimed it, and they're very cool about it. So the fifth one, Space Invader. So I've kind of told you about projects that's going to happen in the, that has happened in the past and that is ongoing currently. And Space Invader is a project that is about to happen. It's the first time I talk about it actually outside of, um, outside of people that I'm trying to um, initiate it with. Um, but basically, um, Space Invader Cube is, um, is what it is. It's mixing Space Invader and CubeSats. So like I was telling you before, CubeSats are um, sort of 10 by 10 by 10 satellites. Um, they are much more tangible, but still we need quite a lot of expertise to build it. Luckily, there is um, OpenCube. I don't know if you can see the very small text there, but it's a project between Citizen Inventor and OpenCube. So OpenCube is an open source CubeSat, and they've been trying to um, sort of develop an open source format and share the schema and everything. They have actually a GitHub repo as well. Um, but closer to the dates, we will announce all these details as well uh, on our website. But currently, um, I've just mocked up a website and we'll make it available uh, probably next month or in October. In fact, we'll do it in October. Um, and so the idea is we would uh, launch some CubeSats and uh, hmm, should I tell you the rest? I launched some CubeSats and have some space invaders in it. That's how much, how much I would tell you. Um, but we definitely need um, uh, balloon people. So if you are from UK has or have any high altitude balloon or low altitude balloon, in fact, uh, experience, I'd love to hear from you. Uh, that would help our space invader go places. So definitely need it. Um, and we will, in fact, announce proper plan for that in Space Town Hall. So if hands-on tinkering with electronics and playing with software is not your kind of thing, there is Space Town Hall. Um, Space Town Hall is something that um, we want to launch in Q4 this year. And the date for the first ever Space Town Hall would be 6th of October, which is in line with the whole uh, space world, world Space Week thing. So if you haven't heard of World Space Week, it's a UN declared space week where all the space activities will happen. So we're having one too. And that is on the 6th of October. The idea is to provide a place where all things about space can come together. And again, I'm, I'm very big on this kind of, um, you know, I don't really care what background you come from kind of thing. I really wanted to see all sorts of people in the space community, uh, creatives, non-creative, technical people, non-technical people, there is a place for everyone. Uh, and I can tell you for sure that I've got two filmmakers in there. Um, and the idea of the Space Town Hall is that um, people can come together and talk about uh, space projects. Now, if you have one that you're doing, and I haven't covered already, which I'm sure, uh, that would be the case, um, then do come to the Space Town Hall and tell people about it. I wanted a place where everyone can sort of exchange idea and grow their own uh, projects in whichever way they prefer. Uh, and we will have pizza and beer, <laughs> if, if that's not enough to bring you around. So um, here is the detail uh, for it. We are on Meetup, and uh, it's going to be in central London at Hub Westminster, so it should be fairly central. Um, we would have OpenCube there talking about the Space Invader Cube. We would have, uh, I don't know if you've been to the rocket um, talk earlier on, we would have rockets, but not, uh, not the very fiery type, um, but we will definitely have rocketry type talk. Uh, and we would have more than that. We'll have maybe interplanetary travel. Let's see how far that would go. Um, and so, uh, it would be great if I can see if you want to come along and bring other stuff as well to just make it a lively town hall. And just in case there's any design capacity in here, um, I'm running a competition on uh, designing sort of logos and badges and things like that for uh, Space Town Hall. It's the first of all of the Space Town Hall, but I do intend to have this running more regularly. Um, 
and start making goodies for it, really. Uh, but because we're voluntary, uh, we're run by run volunteers, uh, I'm afraid the competition will yield no tangible benefit apart from your name being next to the logo saying that somebody has designed this very cool thing that you stick on your laptop. So that's all I could offer on that. Um, and finally, I just wanted to say space is fun. <laughs> Uh, that's a picture of the community going to European Space Agency Technology Center, a mouthful, ESTEC, in uh, the Netherlands. So we organized a trip earlier this year to go and visit ESTEC. We were super cool. We managed to get in on the weekend, which they're normally not open for. And we took this picture in the Russian module uh, of the ISS, a replica of it. And obviously, there is actually gravity. We're just fooling around. <laughs> But you do get to like, you know, switch buttons and put hands into pockets and things like that in, in that little module. And I wanted to say space is open. Uh, I'm wearing the t-shirt, Space Up UK. And uh, the reason why I've chosen this image for openness is because this is an event that we organize, uh, not only Citizen Inventor, but actually uh, is led by Kate and Chris. Um, and we were running this event to sort of bring different people in. It's really cool because this project we had uh, in this event, people who are interested in space could come along and actually go on the stage and just talk about it. There is no uh, pre-organized uh, talks or anything. Everybody is free to talk. Uh, everybody is free to book a room. Everybody can talk about any sort of topic, bounce ideas around, get discussions going. So it's a really, really relaxing atmosphere and really, again, really open. Uh, we've had people from all over Europe. In fact, Space Up, if you haven't already heard, Space Up is an international sort of event template. So if you want to host one in your town, do it. Look up Space Up and you can do it. Um, and finally, I just wanted to say space is cool. Um, taking a photo like that is not cool. But, um, but I don't know if you could see on there, we, uh, on the Space Up event, we've actually received uh, greetings from the Orbit and from Houston Mission Control. Yeah, so it's really fun. Like, I mean, you, I didn't expect it. I didn't expect astronauts to be so friendly, but it is. And in fact, it's really cool that they actually did tweet to us and did care about all these things. So, you know, I think space is a friendly bunch and you can do it. <laughs> And so here are my details again and the website, and hopefully that should have all the pointers to all the um, things that I've talked about. Finally, I just wanted to say if you run a space project and you're looking for resources or if you're looking for people or if you're looking to spread the word, um, we have a directory listing for space projects. So I'd be more than happy to help you to spread the love and make everybody very spacey. Thank you. Questions? Yeah. Do we have any questions? Okay. Have you seen any of the pocket cube stuff? Yes. Um, in fact, um, I'm leaking this now. No, I shouldn't. But there will be some kind of pocket cube uh, events coming up uh, at some point in the UK, possibly in Harwell. I didn't say that. <laughs> so yeah. Yeah. Uh, hiya. Uh, so what sort of stuff have people managed to get done with these little sprite sats? Um, the sprite sats, is, it's a bit of a sad story, actually. So what happened is um, the sprites, so you can actually, they have accelerometer, they have gyros on it, so you can actually do some reading and it can send you a short message, which you can decode. Um, so that's all very well and you can code it. Um, the sad story bit is they did get launched um, on the Kicksat, and the Kicksat did did get into the atmosphere and start orbiting Earth, um, I think back in April, May kind of time, um, when they hitch a hike with SpaceX launch. Um, the only sad thing is the clock got damaged. Uh, <laughs> and so the time for releasing the sprites was all messed up. So by the time it was ready to release the sprites, it's re-entered. Uh, so we kind of missed it. But they did say they're going to do take two. So. 
are these sort of things up there, these temporary satellites? I think it totally depends on the condition and how low or how high the orbit is. Because, uh, oh, I forgot to mention, actually, for KICKSAT, it's on low Earth orbit, so it does re-enter uh, fairly quickly. I think KICKSAT stayed in orbit for maybe a, a few weeks, two to three weeks. Um, and people were able to pick up signals from the KICKSAT. So r amateur radio uh, people have been picking up signals from that. It's just that it really didn't manage to release the sprite, so we can't pick up signals from the sprite. Um, but I have to, I forgot to mention that pocket spacecraft is slightly different in that they don't only aim to uh, come back on Earth. So actually it's a slightly different design. The reason why it's on a sort of a disk shape, on a thin film disk shape, is um, the idea is that once they release these kind of pocket spacecraft on Earth, it would kind of leave down as opposed to burn up. So you will get to kind of pick it up. And the coolest thing about, I think, pocket spacecraft is they don't aim to stay on Earth, they aim to go to the moon. So they aim to slam your uh, thin film uh, satellite at the moon. Yeah. Uh, any more questions? No. Excellent. Right. Big round of applause for Stephanie. Thank you. Yeah.